Day 3 of the Western and Southern Open was definitely the most eventful thus far, as it saw the returns of Naomi Osaka, Novak Djokovic, Dominic Thiem, and more since the resumption of the tennis tour. Serena Williams, who already had a couple of matches under her belt from Lexington, made her 2020 Cincy Open debut, squaring off against Dutch woman Arantxa Roos. Williams served very well in the first set, but so did Roos, as a tiebreaker would decide the opening's outcome. Serena faced a lot of adversity here, going down 2-4, then 5-6, facing a set point. She overcame both hurdles, thanks to that continued strong serving, taking the set in 59 minutes. The second set was a complete turnaround, as after breaking in the first game, Serena started to falter physically and lost the next 6 of 8 games. After taking advantage of the heat rule and removing her skirt, Williams stepped up her game once again to go up 5-2 in the decider. Full credit to Roos though, as the Dutch woman was rock solid, stringing off 4 consecutive games to serve for the match. Arashka came within two points of victory multiple times, but Serena, being the great champion she is, reached another gear, breaking Ruse, then wiping her out in the tiebreaker. A lot of people were saying that Serena's form was poor and that she should be ashamed of herself for almost losing to a player ranked outside the top 70, but Ruse played like a top 10 player. Since the tour's resumption, Serena hasn't yet faced a player in the top 60, and all of her matches have gone to 3 sets. That being said, all of Serena's opponents played well beyond their rankings, and with the exception of Rogers, would have probably beaten about 95% of other opponents. I think a good explanation behind these results though, is the lack of crowd, because it kind of gives these matches a practice or challenger type feel, and these lower ranked players are playing more fearlessly. Another plus side the lower ranked players have is more match play, because many have to go through qualifiers or play one extra round. I think with everything considered, Serena played really well especially off the ground, but if there's one area she could really approve upon, it's the serve. While it was oftentimes her saving grace, she had a relatively low first serve percentage and didn't really go after her second. I noticed that she was taped up a lot, which could explain why, but in my opinion, if she is feeling some type of pain, she should eventually pull out of the tournament early. After her nearly 3 hour victory, she'll have another tough match tomorrow night against Maria Sakari. While she can definitely win this match, and even the tournament, I don't think the latter will happen, and will instead place my bets on her US Open campaign. Another woman who had a difficult yet promising opening round win was Naomi Osaka as she got by Czech woman Karolina Muhova 6-7-6-4-6-2. As I expected, Naomi was really strong in this match even in the first set as her movement, serves, and ground game were all on point today. I really liked how she battled and problem solved for the tricky Muhova game and she really showed the attitude she had on the way to her 2019 Australian Open title. After the match, Naomi revealed that she has a lot more stuff up her sleeve, saying that she has yet to incorporate some things she worked on during the break. Kenan was originally my pick to win this tournament, but I'm now giving that to Naomi as I picked her to reach the finals. I'm a bit nervous about this choice though, as Naomi has a difficult third round opponent next in Diana Yastrzemska, who is actually coached by Sasha Bayan, Osaka's old coach. While Osaka did say that she changed her game a lot, Bayan knows a lot about her and will have his charge fully prepared. The women's draw as a whole is very open currently because in addition to Pliskova and Kenan falling, Petra Kvitova and defending Chet Madison Keys fell to Marie Bolskova and Anja Bull respectively. Keys' loss means that only one seeded player will reach the quarterfinals in that bottom half. All of those unseeded players are playing well. But most impressive is Victoria Azarenka, as she's been on fire thus far, beating Vekic and Garcia in straight sets. The steady Courtney won't be easy, but I think the Belarusian has an excellent shot at reaching the semifinals. For my finalist prediction in the bottom half, I have more of an ultimatum, as I feel if Sakari beats Serena, she'll reach the final, but if she doesn't, I think Serena will eventually fall to whether literally or physically. Thus, Azarenka would be my pick. Much like Azarenka, 
Andy Murray has experienced a surprising resurgence this tournament, beating Alexander Zverev 7-5 in the third for his first top 10 win since 2017. Overall, I'm really impressed by Andy's performance because while Zverev suffered a lot with his serve, Murray's resilience and movement was truly incredible. Murray will next face Raonic, who was also playing well this tournament. A player who did not play well though was second seed Dominic Team, who suffered a shocking 6-2, 6-1 loss to Filip Krajinovic. In my preview, I mentioned that the court speed in New York is significantly faster this season, but seeing how well he played on those fast courts in Melbourne, I thought Team would be fine. One thing I didn't consider though was his lack of match play on the surface because at least in Australia, he was able to play his way into form at the ATP Cup. Yes, Team has been playing exhibitions throughout the pandemic, but one, meaningful matches are different and two, he simply hasn't played matches on this quick surface. Addressing his performance today, Dominic took a bizarre approach and often approaching the net even when he wasn't in the best position. He served and volleyed a lot in this match, which was a very poor play. In addition to having very little success on serve, Dominic returned extremely poor, only winning two, yes, two total points on his opponent's serve. Giving credit to Philip, the serve played a very good match and took advantage of team's many bunt returns. Dominic just in general made far too many unforced errors and needs to quickly clean things up before the US Open. Novak Djokovic managed to avoid team's fate, scraping out a 7-6, 6-4 win over Ricardus Barrancas. The last time these two played, Barrancas only won 5 games in a best of 5 match, and this close scoreline can be attributed to his excellent playing and Djokovic's rustiness. Barrancas was up breaks in both sets, but was unable to handle the occasion. Overall, I think Novak should be proud with his performance as he really ramped things up towards the tail end of the match. I am concerned with Novak's neck injury which forced him out of the doubles competition as he had that worked on in a painful medical timeout. The world number one will look to win his 20th consecutive match this season over Tennis Sangren, who staged an impressive comeback victory over Felix Auger Aliassime. Addressing my men's draw predictions, much like the women's, is totally busted as my finalists Fritz and team both lost today. I'm kind of hesitant to make new picks because I totally missed the mark, but for now I'm just going to wing it and say that Tsitsipas and Hatchinoff will reach the finals. That's all for today's video and let me know how you feel about Serena and Naomi's struggle wins. Also, did team's loss surprise you like it did me? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below and subscribe and click the notification bell so you're notified whenever we post new content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time here on Grand Slam Tennis News Today.